Hey folks, this is Nick, and I'm going to make a little screencast here to demonstrate uh, some of the basics of Git and what it looks like when you make changes and there's not a merge conflict, and what it looks like when you make changes and there is a merge conflict. So I've created a simple repository here in uh, on GitHub, the Git repository hosted on GitHub, uh, that I'll add things to. Uh, and we'll see what that looks like. Uh, all this is using IntelliJ's IDEA uh, tool because that's what we're going to be using in the class, although this will look fairly similar in most modern editors or development environments. Um, the one thing that's probably kind of different is different tools tend to show you merge conflicts and give you different ways of dealing with merge conflicts. But other than that, most of this will look the same. Um, so first thing we have to do is we actually have to get a local copy of this repository. So this repository currently is being hosted on GitHub servers and whatever cloud thing they've got. And I want to grab a copy and have it here on my computer. So I'm going to go to this clone or download button. I'm going to select the link here. Uh, and then over in IntelliJ, I'm going to do checkout from version control from their little welcome screen. I'm going to say I want to check something out from GitHub. Then there's a little pause while IntelliJ talks to GitHub. And then I'm going to paste here the URL that I got from GitHub. Uh, you can change this parent directory to say where you want this to live. Uh, I have mine set up so it automatically defaults into my 3601 directory inside courses, inside documents, blah, blah, blah. You, if you have a particular place, you keep your coursework or you want to keep the work for this particular class, you could specify a path there. Um, the directory name is automatically filled in from the URL, um, and I'm going to leave that alone. So I'm going to say clone. And it says, hey, do you want to create a new IntelliJ project from the sources? And yes, I do, actually. That would be great. Now, there's going to be a whole bunch of dialog boxes here. We can pretty much ignore them because it'll be different when we get to the labs proper. But I'm going to go ahead and generally take the default. So yes, I want to create a project. Next. Um, that's what I want to call it. Next. Um, it says, hey, look, I found some Java code inside this directory. Do you want to treat that directory like it's a place where Java code lives? And I'm going to say, sure, that seems reasonable. And I'll say next. And then it asks me this library stuff, and I don't care. So I'm going to say next. And now I'm going to say next again. And yeah, I'm okay that no frameworks were detected. And boom, it actually has my project now. <laughs> And so there's this various files folder and a program folder. And these are the two places we're going to put things um, that we care about. Um, and if we flip back over to the GitHub repository, we can see that this looks very similar to the set of files in uh, the initial GitHub repository. Uh, the main thing is there's various uh, folders or files that are particular to IDEA. Um, so this .idea folder um, uh, and this merge conflict demo, that's an IDEA thing. So these are created by IDEA. We're going to ignore them. OK, so the first thing I want to do, there are two things I'm going to do here. The first is I'm going to put a file in various files, and that's if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put one file there and I'm going to pretend another person, KK, is putting another file in there, just a totally different file, that's not likely to yield a conflict. If we're editing, creating, changing totally different files, we are not likely to run into each other and we're not likely to have conflicts. So I'll do that first. And then I'm going to go into this program folder and we're going to pretend that I'm editing that program at the same time that KK is editing that program. And that's going to lead to a merge conflict. And we'll see what that looks like. So let's first do the various files thing. So I've got this folder. And I just want to create some random file. So I'm going to say new file. Um, 
um, and I'm going to say nix file dot md for markdown. Um, and now whenever you create a new file in IntelliJ, it asks if you want to add that to Git. So it's a file that Git knows about and cares about. Generally, the answer is yes, unless this is some kind of experiment that you're doing and you're not really sure it's something you're ever going to want to commit. Odds are it's going to be a thing that you're going to want to um, say yes to. So we're going to say yes. Um, and because this is a markdown file, uh, IntelliJ actually gives me the ability to preview those. Um, so I can say something like this is very exciting and you can see that IntelliJ uh, rendered in the preview the underscore very as italicized. There actually is a fancier uh, preview render that you can switch to if you want to. I'll say yes just to get that to be quiet. Um, and so I've now created this little file. Okay. Now, and the file shows up here. But notice that the file does not show up here, right? I have made a change to my local repository on my computer, but there's no way GitHub knows about that until I tell it that I've made this change and I want this change to go to um, GitHub, okay? So I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, I have to do several things. I have to commit this change. That puts that change into my local repository and then I have to push that change up to GitHub and that's going to make it available uh, on GitHub and visible on GitHub. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to commit um, git commit file um, and here I'm going to cancel this just to show you that there's a whole lot of ways we can do this. So um, I did it by right clicking on the file there's also a VCS git commit file. There's also down here a git menu that has some options. It does not have commit here, but uh, it does have some options. And over here in version control, um, I can look at the things, the local changes. Oh, and there's my file. And I can right click on that and say commit. So IntelliJ gives you a lot of different ways to do the same thing, depending on sort of what makes the most logical sense to you, um, where you are in the project, in, in the editor. So there's a lot of options there. So I'll go ahead and pick this one because I'm here. Commit. Um, then it shows me uh, what I'm committing. Uh, and here uh, I just have green, which says I'm adding text, but if there was stuff I was removing or changing, there would also be red for stuff that's going away. Um, and if there were multiple files, I'd be able to look at all of them up here. Um, and I can type my commit message. So I can say added a file for Nick. Um, and usually you would want this to be some kind of, you know, meaningful commit message that describes what it is you've done. Um, there's not much to say here since this is just for demonstration purposes. And I can say commit. I could also say commit and push and do both steps in one go. I think it's usually safer to do commit first and then push because push can lead to some weird things sometimes. So I'm going to say commit. Okay. And now I've committed my work and it shows that here. One file committed, added a file for Nick. And now I need to push the work that I'm doing up to GitHub. So to push the work that I'm doing is quite straightforward. Um, so again, I can go to VCS. That stands for Version Control Systems. Um, I can go down to Git. And one of the options there is push. Um, I also could do a push from here. I think I can also do a push. No, I can't do a push from there. So there's various ways I can do a push. I'll do a push from up here. Git push and it says hey okay I'm going to push this change where I added this file for Nick is that what you want yep that's what I want so I say push and it says whoa no that didn't work push of current branch master was rejected remote changes need to be merged before pushing 
Ah. So what's happening here is I cheated and I paused the video for a second and went over on the side and created a file as if I was KK and pushed that up. And Git says, you can't push changes until you have all the changes other people have made pulled down into your project. And I don't have those changes that KK made um, while I was working. Like she pushed before I did. And so when I tried to push, Git was like, no, 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 no. There are changes up on the repo on GitHub that you don't have and you need to get them or we're not going to let you go forward. Um, and it's like, okay, you could cancel, uh, rebase, uh, which is a little complicated. I'm not going to get into that. Or you can merge. So merge says, please pull down the changes that KK made and try to merge them with my changes somewhat intelligently. And let's hope everything's going to be fine. And we don't, didn't both try to change the same thing at the same time. So I'm going to say merge, boop. And now I have pulled uh, those changes um, and it went ahead and pushed my commits. Um, so it was able to do the merge, say everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and push those changes up like you said you wanted. And so now all of that, my change should be up on GitHub. And if we go over to GitHub and we reload this page, doo -doo, and we go into various files, we indeed, we see my file, Nick's file. This is very exciting. And then a file for KK. This is a file for KK. So that's the file that KK, I'm pretending KK committed while I was working. So both those commits are now there. If we look at the commit history, um, we can see that I added the file for Nick. Shortly after that, I added the file for KK that was off on the side, but I merged KK's thing in first, and then I merged my new file in second. So if we look at, um, yeah, let's not get me lost, bogged down in things, but um, the merge that we did in IntelliJ worked and everything was golden and swell, okay? One of the things that Git provides to help us organize our work is this concept of a branch. And a branch is basically sort of a thread through time that collects commits. And we can have multiple branches so that I can be working on doing something about database updates while you're working on uh, improving the user interface in some way. And since those are probably not directly related, there's a good chance we won't run into each other. And we can work on separate branches though, so that when I make a commit to something that's kind of half done and breaks a bunch of the tests and isn't very good, uh, but will become awesome, but it's just not there yet. I can still commit it to my branch and it won't mess up the work in your branch. And it's not until we merge the work from one branch into the other that those two things are living in the same space. So in the next example, I've got a program, a simple Java program, hellos, um, and I'm going to have myself, and again, we're going to pretend that KK, that KK and I are both editing this program. And because we're editing the same file, there is a much higher chance of some kind of conflict happening. Um, I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to introduce the idea of branches. So I'm going to actually create a branch to do my work in. I will be able to commit in that branch and push in that branch successfully because KK is going to work in a totally different branch. And when I'm ready to merge my work into master, that's when we're going to run into a possible problem because KK will have already merged her work into master and then we'll have a conflict we'll have to resolve which won't be hard, it'll all be good, um, but that's going to be the deal. So I'm going to come over here to IntelliJ and uh, I am going to create a new branch. 
So if I go to VCS get branches, I have options like new branch, blah, blah, blah. These same options are also down here in this little guy. And the get colon master is telling me that I'm actually working in the branch called master right now. Whenever you create a project in GitHub, uh, it starts you off in a branch called master. And you have only that branch. Um, so you can see here it says one branch called master. Um, but we can create as many branches as we want. So I'm going to actually say I want to make a new branch. And I'll call it um, uh, Nix Program branch and you can't have white space in branches so branch names uh, and I'll want to leave this uh, box check to check out the branch that says I'm going to make a branch and I'm going to move over to that new branch and be working there so if I say okay now down here it says get Nix program branch um, and we see that current is Nix program branch not master and so any work that I do will be in that program branch. So I'm going to come over here and open up the program and uh, I'm going to say builder.append uh, Nick says hello whoops can't type ah ah boom so I'm going to just have a method uh, called Nick says hello that will um and uh why is that not indented correctly let us fix that code reformat boom that's better um and so i'm going to create a method public static string nick says hello um and i'm just going to return uh, Nick says, howdy. Okay. And so that should add uh, a little message uh, to this output string. Oh, and I should put a new line at the end of that, or we'll end up with everything on one big line. Um, uh, oh, actually, I want to indent with spaces. Spaces are better. Um, so I'm going to run this. So if I right click, I can say run hellos. Uh, and there's my output. I get hello, folks. And Nick says howdy. And that's good because that's what I wanted. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and commit. Um, so if I go back to version control and I say, what do I got? Well, I have changes to hellos. I'm going to commit that. And uh, I'm. It shows me down here what's changed. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Do I only get to go up? Apparently it won't go up. Uh, let's make this bigger this way. Then. Um, it shows me what the old file was here on the left. And it shows me what the new file is on the right. And again, green indicates that I've changed, added stuff. Um, so there's some futzing around about the spacing. Um, in general, actually, that's a really bad thing to do. If you mess with the spacing, uh, it's a good way to end up with terrible merge conflicts in code. So it's better to do all the get this have a standard for spacing and have everybody follow it. Otherwise, uh, very bad things can happen. Um, but the important piece here is we see this green where I added that line, and this green where I added the, my new method. And so I'm going to change my commit message so that it says something meaningful. So added a howdy from Nick. Um, oops. You generally want these to be uh, as kind of commands um, is the recommended best practice for that first line. Um, so this adds a hello message from Nick. And then I'm going to say commit. And IntelliJ tries to be really smart and help you out. Um, and uh, it says it found a couple of warnings in my code. Do I want to review them before I commit? Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to say I'm going to skip that and just commit. But in general, I would actually say review. I want to know 
what it was IntelliJ thought wasn't great about this piece of code because I want to commit the best, po best possible quality code to the project. So I'm going to say commit, um, and, uh, and now I can push. Um, so I can say VCS get um, push, and yep, that's the change I want to make. Um, and now my push was successful. Nobody else had done anything. Nothing weird had happened. If I go back over here, it says, hey, there's a new branch less than a minute ago called Nick's Program Branch. Um, and we could go look at that. So we can switch to Nick's Program Branch. Do, do, do. And so notice it says here, Branch, Nick's Program Branch. I can switch between Master and Nick's Program Branch uh, quite freely. If I'm in Nick's program branch and I go over to program and look at hellos, I see that, yes, indeed, it's got my new stuff that I added. Yay! Um, and also note that when I'm back here, it gives me this option to compare and pull request. If I hit that, we're not going to talk about pull requests here, but one of the nice things is we get a compare so we can see what's changed. And so these lines got removed. And these guys' lines got added. And you might say, well, wh why did this line get removed and replaced with the same line? And that's the spacing. That's what changing the spacing will do for you. Lines that you didn't really change uh, end up looking like you changed them because you messed with the spacing. So that's one of the reasons that that's not a good idea. Um, so I'm going to go back over to here. Um, now, uh, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to want to merge the work that I've done in my branch into master because I want that work to be available in master. Before I actually do the, the pushing, while I'm back over here uh, looking at the code, IntelliJ is highlighting in yellow the two things. Remember there were two warnings that it had? So it's highlighting those warnings here, and if I hover over them, the first one is it's saying string builder can be replaced with just a string. So it's saying, you know, string builder is kind of a heavyweight class and you're not really using it in a way that would be uh, valuable in this setting. So maybe you just should replace it with a string. I'm actually ignore that for now. Um, I think there's some reasons to possibly leave that as string builder, um, sort of looking ahead and thinking about where this program's going. So I'm going to ignore that one. The second one, it says, oh, that method could be private. Well, that's true, actually. That method could totally be private. And that's actually not a bad idea. So I'm going to change that to be private. Um, and now in, you know, the uh, changes, I've got this, my hellos file has a change. Oh, I should probably run it and make sure I didn't, like, you know, break something. Um, and it still says, howdy, life's good. So I'm going to go ahead and commit um, this file. And uh, again, it shows me what's changed. I changed public to private. And since I changed it, rather than just adding some stuff or deleting some stuff, it's colored that in a blue color. Things that are removed would be red. Things that are added are green. Things that are just changed are um, blue. So uh, change public hello to private um, uh, idea correctly pointed out that my uh, Nick says hello method could have been private and it's generally a better idea to limit visibility when possible. So I took that suggestion. Boop. So I'm going to commit again. And again, it's like, oh, there's still that other warning. Warning. Well, I know what that one is now. So I'm okay. I'm going to just say commit. So it says I made the commit. It shows me what the message was. That's really exciting. Um, I need to push that, um, that's not there, VCS get, um, so I'm ready to push, uh, and that looks awesome, so I'm pushing, 
and everything's good. So I've pushed, the push was successful, push one commit up. So notice everything's worked swell. I haven't run into any problems. It turns out that actually I was secretly changing the code on the side, but I wasn't changing it in this branch. And because all our pushing and pulling has been in this branch so far, um, when we've been working with the program, we haven't run into any conflicts. Uh, where we're going to have a problem right now is when I switch to master and try to merge this work into master, then it's going to go goofy on me. Um, and we'll have to do a merge conflict. So I'm going to switch to master. So I can do that right here in this little pop-up. I can say, um, I'm in this one here, but if I just click this uh, and say check out, um, it'll be like, whoa, okay, we're in master. Now it looks like, oh, I lost all my work, but I haven't. My work's still there. Um, it's just in the other branch, okay? So it's like there was another copy of the universe um, and it's got that work in it and I can get that back and come back here and go back to Nick's program branch uh, and say check out and voila, there's my stuff. So I haven't lost anything, um, it's just in a different branch. So I'm gonna go back to master check out Oh, and I just realized you haven't been able to see those things because those went off the screen. So I'm going to come back over here and we'll do that again. So I can um, check out Nick's program branch, check out, or I can uh, master, check out. I can also do these things up here in the VCS menu um, under branches. I get this thing and I can say, oh, I want to be in master. Um, or I want to be in Nick's program branch. Um, so that's the one with the program. Uh, and then uh, branches, uh, I want to switch back to master. Okay, so now I'm in master, get master. Life is good. At this point, I want to merge the changes from my branch into master. I think the work I've got is awesome. All the tests pass. It's beautifully formatted. The variable names are wonderfully chosen. I've refactored it so there's no duplication. I mean, it is a gorgeous piece of code. I'm ready to make it part of the group's code base um, and part of what we're shipping, as it were, to the customer. So I want to uh, get merge changes. So this is where I say I want to merge some changes from one branch into another. So I'm going to say that. And uh, it gives me this option to say, well, what do I want to merge in? And I can click whichever ones I want here. And there could be many if you have many branches. I'm in master, so whatever I choose is going to merge into master. I'm going to actually merge the local copy of Nick's program branch, this remote origin thing. That's actually talking about the version of Nick's program branch on GitHub. And I don't want to use that one. I want to use the local one here. It turns out they're the same at the moment, so it wouldn't really matter. But uh, I think it would be simpler. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, it gives me the chance to do a commit message. Um, so I can say um, merging in uh, changes from, uh, well, it's, it's merging in uh Nick's greeting method. Okay. And I'm gonna say merge. And voila! Now I'm still in master, but I've got the changes that I made. And if I run the program here, it should still do the right thing. Yay! And if I go to version control. I can see local changes, um, that that branch is all up to date. There's nothing under default that uh, would need to be committed. So my master is in good shape. And I think it sounds like it's a good time to push. So let's go get um, uh, push. There we are. And so I'm saying, OK, I'm in master. So this is pushing the changes in master up to GitHub. I'm saying I've got changes in master. I want everyone to have. I'm going to push those up. And it says uh, here are the two 
uh, commits that you've made since uh, that would be pushed up to master. There's the adding the method and then changing the method from public to private. And I can be like, yeah, that looks good. Push that thing up there. And it's like, oh, no, there have been changes because I went off to the side and I did some uh, editing of the code uh, as if I was KK. So if we come over here um, and we look at program uh, and hellos, it has KK says hello and a greeting from KK. Um, so she got in there ahead of me. Um, and now I've got this problem where I'm trying to uh, push my stuff. And it's like, oh, so I'm going to just be like, well, let's hope that merge does the right thing again and hit the button. And merge conflicts. Oh, no. So it tells me that there's a merge conflict, it says I have to resolve them before continuing. Um, and if we move this down a little bit, we can see IntelliJ actually, um, and actually this is Git, not IntelliJ. Git highlights where the conflicts are with this sort of odd less than, less than, equal, equal, greater than, greater than syntax. So it shows you kind of your version of the world and their version of the world separated by the equal signs. So head is basically saying the latest version of the universe on your end. And so everything from head to the equal signs is you. And uh, origin master is saying the version in branch master out there uh, on GitHub. And so uh, these things are on yours and these things are on theirs. Um, and they're like, you know, what do you want to do about this? So I'm actually, we could kind of just go hack this. I'm actually going to use the merge tool in IntelliJ and we'll see what that looks like and how we can use that to resolve these kinds of issues. So I'm going to hit merge. Um, I'm going to resize this so it all is in the screen that you've got. So it shows me what we have. So Nick's greeting, it shows us what's out there on GitHub. So that's KK's greeting. And then it shows us a merge of those two things, which is pretty clearly not right. You know, this man is just have nothing. <laughs> so that's not what we want. Um, but we can use some of these buttons, like the X's and the arrows, to move things across as we need to. So if we choose the arrows on something that says we want to take that change and make it part of uh, the result. And if we choose an X that says, nah, we don't really want that code to be part of what we're doing. So let's look at what we got here. Um, in particular, I do want uh, this Nick says hello. So let's like pop that over and see what that looks like. Except, oh, that's looking pretty good. Now, I also am going to need the method because at the moment I've got the call, but notice it's like, whoa, I can't resolve that method. That's not good. So I'm going to need to bring this over. Oh, what's the at symbol? Oh, that's annotation stuff. We're going to ignore that. So I'm going to say bring the, that over. And now that made that warning go away. That's a good thing. But now KK is going to be pretty miffed if I have removed her work. Right? And this is one of the dangerous things about merge conflicts. You're, you've, you've been working for hours on your stuff. It's beautiful. You really want it to be in there. It's late. You're 10 minutes late for dinner. You haven't had dinner and it's 2 in the morning. I don't know, you know. But you really want to just merge your changes and go home and go to bed or get to class or whatever. And it's easy then to be in a rush and inadvertently mess up other people's work. And that's not good. So we need to be careful to think about making sure that we preserve other people's work. And we really want KK's hello. So let's hit the accept on that. Now, this didn't quite do the right thing. Notice it brought over another copy of the hello folks line. We don't really want that. We can actually edit that out right here in this window. So I can be like, boom, that's gone. And we need, because it's all yelly, uh, we need to make sure we get KK's um, method as well. And now things are not yelly, and that's a win.
Okay. Now we've got some weird uh, indentation issues. I'm going to resolve those in a little bit. Um, but we've done the merging and I think we've got the code in the right place. You can see that this can take a while. Like it requires thought and it may be best done in the presence of multiple human beings to talk about, well, why is this here? Right? So don't try to do a merge in a hurry uh, and then rush off because that's a good way to really tick off your teammates. If you find yourself doing merge stuff, it's probably best to be thoughtful about it. Make sure you've got time. Maybe talk to some other people. Um, now, once we're in a happy place, we can say apply. If it's just gone terrible, like we started moving some things in, and wow, it was doing really weird stuff, and we're like, oh, this is not looking good, we can say abort and either start the merge again or back out of this whole thing and explore other ways to move forward. But I think we've got this in a pretty good place, so I'm going to say apply. Um, uh, and it's got two changes it's not happy about. That's these two blue ones. This one would give us another print of build string. I don't want that. And this would give us another public static void main. I definitely don't want that. So I'm sure I want to save my changes and finish merging. And so voila! Um, we are all merged up. Notice it said the push was rejected. So we will have to push again. Um, but before I do that, I probably want to do uh, fix the indentation issues because notice that's all like a total mess at the moment um, uh, because the changes I made to the side were with a different editor that had a different um, setup. So I'm going to say code, reformat. Uh, and again, you want to be careful about doing things like that. But if everybody's using IntelliJ, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, so now, because I made that change, I'm going to have to commit that. Um, and I'll have to say fix uh, the indentation. Um, there were icky combinations of spaces and tabs, and this fixes that. So I'll say commit. Boom. And I'm going to say commit. Um, oh, there were two warnings. I could have reviewed those because this one actually we probably want to change. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Private. Um, commit that. Commit. Uh, change KK's greeting to private. Um, Again, following IntelliJ's suggestion to limit the visibility of our methods. Commit. Boom. Commit. Now, I think we're in good shape. So let's try to push that thing. VCS, git, push. And here's all the changes that will need to be uh, pushed up um, and uh, we'll go ahead and say yep let's do that um, and it says yay it was successful and if we go over to github um, and reload just to make sure that we're got the latest thing um, if we go look at program Program has my hello, KK's hello, code for my hello, code for KK's hello. And if we look at the commits, um, we'll see that um, we added the howdy from Nick. KK added the hello from KK uh, after that. Then um, I tried to do the merging um, and everything went goofy and we had to fix that. Um, and then we fix the indentation on KK's thing, um, and, or on the whole code, change KK's to private, uh, and that got us to where we are now. So that's a pretty good deal. So we've seen how to use um, committing and pushing. We've seen how to pull changes down. We've seen how to merge. We've seen merge without conflicts, and we've seen merge with conflicts. 
hopefully that helps you get started on uh, the stuff we need to do here um, with Git and GitHub uh, in software design. Definitely let us know if you have any questions. Otherwise, see you in class.